Greetings everybody, tis I, 480 volts. Now, I wanted to get this video up a long time ago, but yada 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 blah 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 blah, insert pathetic reason why this video is taking so long to finally get up here. Let's take a look at Mega Man 3. Mega Man 2 was a commercial success which gave the Blue Bomber a spotlight in the gaming industry. The next logical step was to make a Mega Man 3. However, the damage had been done. Lead designer Akira Kitamura left Capcom after Mega Man 2, most likely due to his previous disagreements with producer Tokuro Fujiwara, who as you may remember, didn't think that Mega Man was worth making a sequel over. After the success of Mega Man 2, Fujiwara obviously realized, okay, this Mega Man thing, it's got potential. Let's keep it going. It's sad that he and Kitamaro couldn't work out their differences, especially since Kitamaro is pretty much the Mega Man guy. A new project director, Masayoshi Kurokawa, I think is how you say his name, was brought in as a replacement. However, lead artist Keiji Inafune explained that he had difficulties with Mega Man 3 because Kurokawa didn't understand Mega Man as well as Kitamara did. Inafune pretty much had to teach him all things Mega Man. This resulted in Inafune pretty much taking on the responsibility of lead developer for its completion. Even though it wasn't official, he pretty much had to do all the work. Inafune experienced a considerable amount of issues due to his extra responsibilities and certain deadlines not being met. The team was forced to put Mega Man 3 on the market before they thought it was ready. Inafune concluded, I knew that if we had more time to polish it, we could do a lot of things better, make it a better game, but the company said that we needed to release it. The whole environment behind what went into the production of the game is what I least favored. Numbers 1 and 2, I really wanted to make the games. I was so excited about them. Number 3, it just turned out very different. Nevertheless, the game was released on the original NES in the year 1990. The first thing that you will notice is, although this game does have a title screen with some very cool music, it does not have a prologue like the second game did. You know what that means? It's off to the internet to find the story. Sometime after the events of Mega Man 2, Dr. Light works to create a peacekeeping robot named Gamma. Hey, Gamma! Just like in Sonic Adventure 1, huh? Uh, anybody? No? No? no nobody finds that... Nobody thinks that's interesting? Okay. Surprisingly, Dr. Wily has renounced his evil ways and has agreed to assist Dr. Light in the creation of Gamma. However, eight robot masters in charge of mining worlds go berserk and steal the power crystals required to bring Gamma online. Mega Man sets off to stop the robot masters and retrieve the crystals. The gameplay is almost identical to the previous entries. Eight robot masters, each one weak to a specific weapon, order of stages decided by you, the player, navigating platforming sections while shooting enemies, passwords, energy tanks, which you can now hold up to nine of, etc. If I have anything to complain about regarding the Robot Masters is that the weakness order doesn't go in a complete circle like the previous two games did. It goes from Top Man to Shadow Man to Spark Man to Magnet Man to Hard Man and then back to Top Man. Then it's Snake Man to Gemini Man to Needle Man back to Snake Man, forming two separate weakness circles, one being smaller than the other. Just a little thing, but most of the games had one giant circle. Now the two biggest innovations in the game are the slide, in which you press down in the jump button and Mega Man slides along the ground. This is useful for getting through some tight passageways and for dodging some enemy fire. It's darn near game breaking, as it will change the way you play. The other big innovation is Rush. Hey Rush, I love that band. All of Mega Man's circuits seem to be functioning properly. The performance is optimum. Everything seems just right. I guess that's why they call me the work in Mega Man. I guess that's what I am. All right, so Rush is Mega Man's new robotic buddy as developed by Dr. Light, a robot dog who has a spring coil on his back that will allow Mega Man to bounce to higher platforms, change into a freaking submarine which can swim around underwater and shoot pellets, or change into a hover jet platform which is completely game-breaking. It allows you full access to everything on screen for as long as you can keep the ammo filled up. It is insanely powerful and game-breaking. Get it as soon as you can. The rush upgrades are acquired just like the special items from Mega Man 2 after you beat certain stages. Another new element of this game is... Breakman. 
the new guy in town. He appears in a few stages where he shoots at you and jumps around a lot, and I, I, I guess you can get hit if you're not careful. And he also appears in Gemini Man's stage where he stands on a platform for about 5 to 10 seconds and then disappears and the platform blows up and allows you to go further in. So he helps us in that stage, but tries to kill us in other stage. Okay, he's just weird. The stages are fun and challenging, the battles are cool, and most of the weapons are pretty useful. I say most because there are a few questionable weapon choices like the hard knuckle which has an annoying delay, the Gemini laser of which you can only fire one shot at a time, and it lingers on screen for way too long and slows the game speed down, and the top spin. The top spin is stupid. Alright, so we've defeated all eight robot masters, now what happens? What is this? <sighs> this is where it all falls apart. Four stages have been reopened and the player must navigate through them again. The layouts have been altered to increase the difficulty. Basically four of the mining zones have been taken over by each of the eight new robots called Dock Robots. There are two Dock Bots in each stage, one at the halfway point and one at the end. As for the Dock Bots themselves... Yeah, they're basically the Mega Man 2 bosses all over again. This feels like a four step back in my opinion. Fighting the Mega Man 2 bosses is cool for Mega Man 2. But this isn't Mega Man 2, this is Mega Man 3. Which means I don't have the special weapons used in Mega Man 2. So now I have to try and use Mega Man 3's weapons against these guys. Also keep in mind that these guys may move like the Mega Man 2 bosses and they might shoot the same weapons as the Mega Man 2 bosses, but they are not the Mega Man 2 bosses. They have different defense levels, which means the arm cannon will not be as effective as it was on some of them in Mega Man 2. In other words, Robots like Air Man, Heat Man, and Flash Man, who were quite easy in Mega Man 2, are now a whole lot harder in this game. Worst of all... <laughs> are you kidding me? You're sending me this far back. If you have been saving your energy tanks, now is the time. Okay, so we defeated all the Doc Bots. Now what? Well, it looks like it's time to face off against Break Man. Well, I was expecting a fortress or a final boss fight, but it looks like the exact same fight as before. I don't even know why they bothered to change his appearance this time around. After you've defeated Breakman, Mega Man returns to Dr. Light's lab to discover that once all of the power crystals return, Dr. Wily stole- uh, wait, what? Oh, sorry. <clears throat> Dr. Wily stole Gamma. Oh, 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 so he was the bad guy the whole time. Oh, never mind. And with that, it is time to begin the Wily stages. The Wily stages are handled exactly the same as the last two games, with passwords allowing you to start no later than Wily Stage 1, no breaks between stages, special weapons not refilling between stages, etc. However, the Wily stages themselves are much easier than they were in the previous two games. I swear, the Wily stages in this game give out E-Tanks like they're freaking candy. So don't worry about using them to get through the Dockbot stages. You're going to get them replenished here in the Wily stages. No, and as for the bosses, well, Wily stage one has this thing, which is a boss fight of some sort and is not in any way threatening that I am aware of. Boss stage number two is, oh no, 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 no. You are, you are not serious right now. Why? Of, of all the things to bring back from Mega Man 1, why this one? Why could we not bring back, say, the clone from Mega Man 1? Oh, oh, looks like we got that anyway. What is this? Let's bring back as many bosses from previous Mega Man games as we can fit? I told you that Capcom likes to remind us every now and then of how much they're in charge. That being said, this Yellow Devil is much easier to deal with than the last one. For one, you can tell which blocks are about to move before they do. Another thing, you have a slide at your disposal. Another thing, you have E-Tanks. Now, there's no trusty pause glitch this time around, but at least I can beat this guy properly and not feel like I'm cheating. Once you get to the fourth Wily stage, it is time to refight all of the Robot Masters again. It's just like Mega Man 2, they're all in a single room. You f fight whichever one you want in whichever order you want. You get massive health upgrades at the end of each fight. And after that... Uh, Wily boss fights themselves, they're fairly easy with the hard knuckle and rush jet. Once you beat the fight, depending on where Mega Man is standing, he will celebrate by moonwalking. And then, 
Wily will be revealed to be a robot? Oh my gosh. Yo, why, why, why? This is completely useless because after this, you just start a new stage, your health's all the way back to max, you get a few more E-Tanks that you'll probably never use, and you go into another room to fight Dr. Wily for the last time. And now he is controlling Guts, Ma uh, <clears throat> I mean Gamma. Holy cow, this guy is huge. All right, hang on a second. What's the weakness? Oh crap, what's the weakness? Come on, come on, come on, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, come on, come on. What? Top spin? This, this is lying to me. There's no way top spin is his weakness. Um, what have I got to lose? I'm done. I'm done. No, I'm not. I gotta finish the review. After Dr. Wily is defeated, he begs for mercy, the castle begins collapsing, and huge blocks fall, seemingly crushing both Wily and Mega Man. A mysterious shadow figure, looking very much like Breakman, rescues Mega Man, but is unable to save or to find Wily. Mega Man then awakens in the lab, where Dr. Light wonders who brought him here. Breakman's whistle is heard. Dr. Light recognizes it as Proto Man. Proto Man? Who's that? Well, Mega Man takes a walk outside while the game shows us a list of robots created by Dr. Light, beginning with the Robot Masters from the first game, counting down to Roll being number three, Mega Man being number two, and Proto Man being number one. After that, Dr. Wily's capsule is seen fleeing in the distance, so we can only assume that somehow he survived a massive block falling on top of him, and he got away. Don't ask me how, that is never once explained. I have a BS theory about that that is linked to Mega Man 10, but I don't think it's solid and can be firmly grounded in reality, so we'll leave that unknown, at least for now. I would like to take a moment to explain the backstory of Proto Man, because it's actually an interesting story, and it took me a while to find the backstory so I don't know if it's the easiest thing to come across. The idea is, is that when Dr. Light started creating robots, one of the first designs for a robot he created was Proto Man, and he was designed to be a battle robot. Now, since he was a battle robot, he was, well, he was not exactly going to be able to rely on Dr. Light very much. He was going to be in situations where he was going to be away from Dr. Light, and he was going to have to know how to handle himself if he got into any kind of trouble. If he got damaged, he had to figure out how to repair himself, that kind of stuff. So he couldn't really depend on humans for human assistance. So Dr. Light modeled Proto Man's personality to be very, very, very independent. So that way, if he ever got into a fix, he would take care of it himself. Unfortunately, Dr. Light did not realize he had made a critical error in Proto Man's memory core system. He discovered a bug that was going to cause Proto Man's system to go completely offline if it was left unattended. Okay, good thing he figured it out now, right? So he goes and he asks Proto Man, hey, you got this problem in your memory core, let me fix it for you. Problem is, Proto Man is Mr. Independent, right? So he says, no, 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 you're not touching me. And Dr. Light says, well, I'm trying to help you. And Proto Man says, nah, I'll take care of myself. And Proto Man runs away from home to try and get as far away from Dr. Light as he can. So I guess Dr. Light made him a bit too independent. Well, after a while, the problem in Proto Man's memory core catches up with him, and he is just about to experience full systems failure when he is discovered by none other than Dr. Wily. Dr. Wily takes him to the lab, fixes him up, corrects the problem. Actually, I think he completely remodels his memory core and Proto Man is saved. Now somewhere along the line, Proto Man realizes that Dr. Wily is evil and must be stopped, right? But despite that, he helps Dr. Wily for a little bit. I guess he figured that he owed his life to Dr. Wily, so he had to work for him until that obligation and debt was fulfilled. Dr. Light's next robot was of course Rock, who would later become Mega Man, and he modeled him just like he modeled Proto Man, except he developed an entirely new memory core system, one that actually worked properly, and he made Rock a little less independent. Now back to the main game. The graphics are about the same as Mega Man 2 and 1. Um, you know, there's nothing too special there. As for the music, well, 
Harumi Fujita was originally signed as the music composer for this game, but she only completed a few songs, and then she had to leave on account of her having a baby. That's great, but it, 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 it is kind of sad that we didn't get to hear more of her compositions. She was replaced with Yasuki Fujita, otherwise known as Bun Bun. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, the music is not nearly, in my opinion, as good as Mega Man 2. However, it's still a solid Mega Man soundtrack, and it definitely fits the Mega Man style, and it's it's definitely worthy of being a Mega Man soundtrack, and some of these tunes really are awesome. I especially like the Wily stages, Shadow Man's theme, the Weapon Select theme, the Title Screen theme, and I absolutely adore Magnet Man's theme. I love it so much, better than anything Mega Man 2 has pulled out, and that's saying a lot, second only to one other stage from Mega Man 5, which we'll talk about when we get to Mega Man 5. I love Magnet Man's theme so freaking much! It is the best. It is the greatest. I am so happy when I hear it. In conclusion, Mega Man 3 is a very solid game. Despite being rushed, I feel like it's the most polished out of the first three. With the exception of the Dockbot section, that part is just bad design in my opinion. It, it didn't need to happen, it, they should not have done that, and, and I know I'm not saying anything that everybody else hasn't already said. However, I can't fault Capcom too much for it because sometimes the only way to know if an idea is bad is to just go with it and see how it turns out. If they had kept this for every other Mega Man game that followed, Yes, that would be bad, but they didn't. They've never done this since, they've, they've stayed away from this, and, you know, okay, so they made a stupid decision on the third game, they never did it again, there we go, lesson learned. Besides, passwords. You can skip the Dockbots entirely if you know the right passwords. You couldn't skip the badly designed Wily stages of Mega Man 2. So, at, at, at least it's better than that. Looking at it from a purely unbiased technical perspective, I would say that this game is better than Mega Man 2. But I, everybody just flocks to Mega Man 2 because that's supposedly the greatest Mega Man game of all time. It's hard to decide which one I like better. Because even though you can skip the Dockbot stage, I feel so cheap doing that. I feel like I have to do the Dockbot stages and I easily hate them more than the Mega Man 2 Wily stages, so in that reason, I'll put Mega Man 2 just a little bit above Mega Man 3. But Mega Man 3 is still a very awesome game, and I love it very much. Alright, well that was Mega Man 3. Uh, somewhere along the line we'll get to Mega Man 4, and somewhere along the line we'll get to Sonic 3 and Knuckles, and somewhere along the line we'll get to other stuff. I really don't know where my channel's going right now. Uh, we've also got more Sim stuff coming, so yeah. Y'all stay tuned, click the subscribe button, the bell, the like, the what, all that blad, blah 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 jazz, and uh, I'll see y'all next time. Peace out!